So this, is, this course is about yoga. First and foremost, it is about yoga. Yoga itself uh, is yoga. Uh, there are many ways of saying what yoga is, but let me say it in, in this particular way, which, and I'll uh, take it forward from there. Yoga is a way to use the body to refine the mind. We are all familiar with the opposite direction. We say, oh, you have a psychosomatic illness, uh, and I feel sick with worry in my stomach. That's all using the mind to, to affect the body. And you can also, you know, you can think yourself into disease, you can think yourself into wellness. But what's interesting is the reverse is also true, that uh, but the, the simplest illustration of this is if you get a really good news, if you feel really happy, what do we do? We just say, oh, I feel so happy. Or how do we feel sad? We feel sad like this. Nobody feels sad like this or happy like this. Isn't that true? Um, in other words, the body reflects how the mind feels. That's simple enough, but the body can change how the mind feels. And in fact, it's a extremely uh, powerful way of refining our consciousness. Uh, it has to be done in a specific way. We all know the concept that, oh, I just went out for a run because I wanted to blow off some steam. That right there is a way of using the body to refine the mind. And ancient yogis studied this across all of the near and far east but primarily in the Indian subcontinent. They studied this and came up with a very refined way of using the body to, to change the mind. Change it to what? Change it to not, uh, you know, you can use yoga to enjoy your food better. There are actually wine tastings, believe it or not, that are done in Brooklyn, New York, uh, where you, you do yoga first and then you are able to open your palate or whatever it is that wine tasters do. Uh, but the intent of yoga is something, of course, thankfully, significantly deeper. It says, let me use my body in order to tune, in, tune my mind into a higher reality. Into what are, what are these higher realities? A sense of peace, a sense of oneness with everybody, and a sense of love for all creation, a sense of inner bliss, a sense of joy, a sense of knowing, meaning wisdom, a sense of empowerment. These are our higher states of consciousness. And you do it with the body, but just with the body is not enough. Otherwise, you can simply go to the gym and find God, which rarely happens. Right? To my knowledge, it's never happened. You need another ingredient there. It, it's, it's just not enough to stretch your hamstrings or you know, make your core stronger. The other ingredient there is the breath. When you combine the body and the breath, and add to it concentration. These three things together, body, breath, and concentration. All of these, everybody has. There's nobody who's alive who doesn't have all three. When you combine all of these three in a very specific way, then you have yoga. Everybody with me? It's really as simple as that. So that's what yoga is, and, and we'll teach you this. We'll teach you step by step. We'll, we'll take you with simple body movements, complex body movements, and we'll invite you to recognize how it will begin to change your mind. And it's very, very powerful. Along the way, as a side effect, there are many health benefits. Many. They are, they are, the, the big thing these days, benefits of yoga is, and I'm an active researcher, so I can speak with this with at least a, a place of some study, one of the benefits of yoga is that it reduces systemic inflammation in the body, no matter what the cause. You know, we get inflamed by, uh, there is inflammation through infection or pollutants or even medicines that we take. Um, and stress itself has a pathway through which it affects, uh, it has an inflammatory response and actual disease conditions. But no matter what the cause, yoga begins to reduce it. No matter what the cause, yoga begins to reduce the stress. Uh, structural therapy. Uh, you, can, you can stretch and improve your core and reduce your chances of getting knee pain or back pain. Um, anxiety, depression, all of those. So you have those benefits too. 
But the higher octave of that is a way to change the consciousness to tune into a higher reality. Now the second part of this is that is what yoga is, but what are the components of yoga? The main thing yoga does is, is, is work with our inner vitality. It's called energy. Now, that might seem weird to some of you. It certainly did to me. But think of it this way. If the mind wants something and needs the body to do it, what is the intermediary? What is it that connects the body and the mind? Because the mind is incorporeal. It's not accessible. You cannot go touch your mind. The body is, by definition, corporeal, meaning body is that which you can touch and feel. What is the intermediary? In physiology, we call it the nervous system. Uh, but again, there is a component of it that is also conscious and intelligent. So this conscious, intelligent, unseeable thing, yet which animates the body, is called as energy, prana. It's, it's the official name for it in yoga. And what we teach you in this course is how to work with the prana. And we'll give you any number of techniques. But at the heart of working with the prana is simply three separate things. One is your willpower. The other is your breath. And the third is your awareness, meaning sensing that something is there, using your breath and willpower to change it. That is called as Raja Yoga. It's the royal path. It's the royal path because no matter what method you use to dial into higher realities, uh, how, would, how do you feel more peaceful? Maybe you could serve others. That's called karma yoga. Uh, maybe you could surrender to a higher principle. It's called bhakti, devotion. Or maybe you could pursue knowledge. You could be a uh, kind of a book uh, kind of person. All of those will give you peace and wisdom and joy. But no matter what those are, underneath, you're working with your energy. So it's Raja Yoga is a direct route, and therefore it's called the royal way. Okay? So what yoga is and what we teach you, so in this 13-week course, we, uh, it, we take this step by step and, and really break it down. And by the time you're done, uh, by the time it's week, num week number 13, all of us will be easily meditating for 45 minutes to an hour. This, I'm not saying this as a salesperson, which I'm not. It's just that 15 years of teaching this, it's guaranteed. You, you know why? Because meditation is natural for us. Uh, it's, we just need to remove some um, inner resistance, and then meditation becomes natural. So you'll be meditating for that long. And you learn, how many yoga poses do we teach? Maybe. 30 or so, something like that? And 39 total, but. 39 total. We teach you around 39 different yoga poses. And we'll, much of what I said comes from, uh, from a very ancient book called the Yoga Sutras. Uh, sutra means um, thread. Uh, it's, if you're flying a kite, it's the thing that you, that you tie to the kite that will help you control it. That's what a sutra is, quite literally. Uh, so these are aphorisms, uh, Zen-like sayings on yoga. And that's our textbook. And a, a, a masterful commentary on the Yoga Sutras was written, uh, probably the best one written in the 20th century. It was written by Swami Kriyananda. Uh, and it's, thank you, bless you, Sita. It's this book, Art and Science of Raja Yoga. So we'll be guided by this book, and myself and Sita and Christina will guide you through all the asanas and techniques over 13 weeks, and we'll discuss philosophy as well. So let me end there. That's kind of, uh, uh, that's my shtick, Louise. <laughs> uh,